Good evening and welcome back to the Tribe Talk. We are today uh, going to look at Game Week 11 preview. Uh, a little twist to our normal format. We're going to keep it shorter. We're going to keep it crisper. And, and primarily, we're going to just look at what uh, our viewers and listeners are really looking for You know, after game week, uh, 10 game weeks now. And there will be a lot of uh, topsy-turvy decisions which have happened, premium forwards, premium midfielders, defense is uh, as crazy as all uh, other premium assets so we're going to keep it short we're going to concentrate on uh, a couple you know a couple of premium forwards we're going to look at uh, Marvin is going to cover united's formation change in formation after the loss to uh, liverpool and how well they performed against spurs uh, avin is going to avin is the only one amongst us who's left with a wild card so he's going to throw some light on that and uh, and we're going to cover spurs Spurs is in spotlight because a certain Conte is back in the Premier League and we're going to cover Spurs as well. Uh, game Week 10 was uh, crazy in a way. Reese James became the first defender ever to score a 20 plus points uh, since the time Fantasy has started. Fantasy Premier League has started. Uh, first double digit haul for any Norwich player, which was the defender. Uh, if you, do you guys remember the name? I, I can't even pronounce the name. <laughs> Order I think it's. Oma Wabi Dele. Yeah, all right. So he but got a, he got get it all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so he got a he got a ten pointer, uh, in spite of Norwich not keeping a clean sheet. There were five clean sheets, all of them were away. Uh, that's a surprising part. There were only two home wins, uh, out of which one was Burnley. So that's another one. Uh, red cards keep coming every every game week. Now we are more than one red card. Uh, an average uh, 13 red cards in 10 game weeks. So yeah, so that, that's in a nutshell that what it was. How was it for you guys? Uh, in, a, in a quick recap for your, how was the game week for you guys, Marvin? So Anush, my game week was bang average. Uh, just had a slight green arrow from 1.2 to I think 1.1 million or so. Uh, this was all about getting the benching decisions wrong uh, the week. Uh, so I had Gallagher on the bench. I had. Ramsdale on the bench, mm. and uh, at one stage I had more points on my bench than at my first eleven. So, I mean, I can't uh, complain too much about the Gallagher benching. I think I would have done that any day of the week, uh, given that yeah, because City away. He, was, he, was, he was already in form, and he was as in yeah, City yeah. away. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Ramsdale, I think is a is a lesson to myself. Uh, I've always played with one four point five goalie and never rotated. Uh, Foster <laughs> came in from nowhere and kept starting, and that tempted me to kind of go with him. Uh, for the one week punt so right. so that's really eight points lost uh, i think had i made the right goalie choice i would have been inside the 1 million uh, which was really the target i mean i think from where i am uh, the idea is to really look at the next 10 weeks and try and get into the top 100k take it one at a time keep sticking to the basics uh, cut the noise out make the sensible moves and then see where you are 10 game weeks down the line i think that's pretty much the script that I am looking to follow and that's probably what's worked for me wherever I have had a bad start to the season uh, on my FPL career. Right, right. So so that was really the idea. Uh, I got in Trent, uh, didn't do much but I think that was more of a long term move. Uh, never expected a big haul in a particular game week anyways. And I sold Alonso who wasn't starting any which way so that was the move. And uh, I think next week again a uh, couple of interesting transfer decisions to make. Uh, because the team, by and large, looks okay, uh, barring a couple of right. positions. Uh, but the rank doesn't really reflect on what the team looks like. So we'll come to that when we come to transfers. Sure, sure. Avin, how are you? Yeah, little little better than Bhavin, uh, I guess. Uh, but again, just just bang on average. Uh, I scored some 50, 51 odd points. Uh, players who actually gave me points were, uh, you know, I think Imen is... Uh, McCarthy did well uh, in goal. Uh, Rafina obviously finally uh, scored something. Yeah, uh, finally. It was okay. It was an okay week. Uh, I had a, a green arrow, uh, about seven eight thousand uh, rank gain from about hundred and eight k to hundred k right now. So right. pretty okay. Uh, it wasn't a disaster. I just as as we were speaking last week, I just want to navigate this uh, next couple of weeks uh, without too much of damage, so that I could uh, just overall my team uh, looking at the upcoming fixtures in mind. Uh, I've already made two transfers. Um, I had two free transfers. Interesting. Uh, booted out uh, KDB uh, for the time being. I'm, I'm just looking at 
uh, one week or two week teams, two week uh, uh, players. Because anyway, I'm going to be wild carding in the next couple of weeks. Right. Yeah. So I got in uh, ESR with a plum uh, uh, game, uh, Watford home. I think that you know there's there's another close to double digit haul coming. And I got uh, Reese James uh, after I got to see that he didn't start the midweek game yesterday. Uh, again, a good fixture against Burnley. I got these two players in. Hopefully, uh, they should be able to give me some points. But otherwise, all in all, a decent week. Uh, nothing to to worry about. Yeah, I got I got similar points around fifty three to fifty four. Got lucky with Armstrong because uh, movement in place. So Armstrong came in uh, from the bench. Uh, but I saw the game and I think he could have easily hall big time there i think he he had some i think couple of very horrid finishes uh so i don't think whether this with this performance whether he's going to be the f- nailed forward which adams i think broja is going to come back whenever he's fit uh yeah 53 points don't have reese james i don't intend to get him because i have chilwell you know, any game week chilwell giving eight points you know the reese james kind of hauls and chilwell kind of hauls are just spoiling us you know yeah. uh, people are just trying to kind of uh, go after them Chilwell got eight points as well, so which is, I think, more than average kind of a scoreline. Uh, I have two free transfers. One already done, as of when you said, KDB out. And uh, got Son in. Uh, because, not because Conte is coming in. Uh, it's primarily to do with, you know, his fixtures. And uh, and we'll, we'll look at uh, how it's going to shape out. So, obviously, Conte got announced yesterday. Uh, Spurs finally, I think... Uh, I don't even Moreno, yes, uh, you know, was one of the huge signings in terms of manager managers what they have had. Uh, they went really down in terms of, with all due respect to Nuno, they went really down in terms of the managerial uh, pedigree. But now they really got a, a gun signing, and I think uh, as a Liverpool as a Liverpool fan, when Klopp got signed, the excitement I had, and I'm sure millions of Liverpool supporters have, I'm sure Spurs fans are just just buzzing right now with this with this kind of a signing. What do you guys think about the signing? Great, uh, great signing. I mean, he was probably the best manager available, and I'm surprised that Spurs were able to get him. Uh, with, with uh, you know, obviously there's some issues with uh, with uh, Conte. Uh, you know, Chelsea were probably a, the best team uh, that could have afforded him. Uh, he did deliver uh, trophies there, uh, but with uh, I don't know with impending uh, you know departure of Kane. Uh, I, I still think he'll he'll probably push his way through, even if Conte remains. Uh, with that money coming in, uh, will he get time to maybe just rebuild the squad for a year or two? That's something that we have to see. But it's a fantastic signing. I think uh, the team is is pretty decent. If you if you see their position vis-a-vis yeah. the talent that they have, I think that definitely is going to be a, a good uh, you know turnaround in the performance. A great run of fixtures coming up. And this season is such, you know, you just get three or four um, uh, straight wins and, and you're knocking, uh, you know, the top four. So, uh, yeah. I think the Spurs are going to do well uh, from a fantasy, fantasy perspective with, with him coming in. There is definite, definite uh, uh, interest in some of the Spurs asset. But but a great, uh, uh, you know, coup for uh, uh, for Spurs. I mean, to get a manager of his pedigree with what Spurs have done last few years, it's not something that they yeah. want so much and it's not as if you know they are one of the bigger teams in England anymore, uh, but it's a, it's, a, it's a great signing for them. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll just uh, take the user as a segue and get into the Spurs uh, and what Conte brings to the table. Uh, so this is what Conte has done in terms of his last three managerial uh, outings. So Chelsea, obviously, he was there for 18 months and he got in uh, in 16-17, won the title. Uh, so one thing which has com- been common across his managerial uh, reign in, in across the last five six years has been, uh, you know, his his proclivity towards uh, wing backs, and he usually plays three five two as a formation. Uh, starting with Chelsea sixteen seventeen, you know, Alonso and Victor Moses, out of all people, I think he was signed from Liverpool at that time. Uh, not at all a good career uh, stint at at Liverpool, you know. With those wing backs, two wing backs, and I think Alonso also was signed uh, just before that. Uh, nine goals and seven assists from his from his these two wingers. Uh, right, sorry, uh, yeah, uh, wingers goes to Inter Milan. I think he got sacked in 2018 from from Chelsea. Uh, usually his sackings are to do with you know his issues with the management rather than anything else. Went to Inter Milan uh, where Juventus had been winning for the last eight nine seasons at a row. Uh, he had he kind of took a 
you know whatever score he got he didn't spend too much he didn't get to spend too much uh if you see in inter milan 1920 season he had biragi and kandreva as his wing backs uh i've written four names there but young and dembrosio were uh, the backups for uh, biragi and kandreva so his main play usually came from the wingers uh you know and he had a solid solid uh, pivot in the midfield uh, around which three tight three at the back uh and wing wingers just kind of booming in and sending the crosses and going into attacking uh you know uh, areas just like how uh chelsea's playing right now 15 goals and 18 assists out of all these four four guys uh, uh and this young is we're talking about ashley young right so if people who do not know this is ashley young of manchester united he, I think in this in this season he got four goals and four assists. Uh, I don't even remember when he got a goal for uh, Manchester United last. So this shows, uh, and Young was around 34, 35 at that time, and this shows that Conte can get, uh, you know, he can really excrete or he can really take out the talent. He he you know, he has an eye of talent, and he I think his his uh, the way he motivates people, the way he uh, kind of turns people on in terms of. Getting out there on the field and uh, giving the best, I think, uh, I think, Klopp, Pep, and uh, these guys is are right there. Uh, 15 goals, 18 assists out of that 1920 season. Uh, they came second. They still lost to, uh, I think, they still lost to Juventus by a point. Next season, he did his signings. He took uh, Biragi and Canreva was sold. Uh, got Hakimi and Perisic, which obviously are mo a little more known names than Biragi and Canreva. Young was still there. Damian, again, this is again a United ex United player. 15 goals and 23 assists from these wing from all these four wingers. Uh, and again, so he, he just kind of in the second season at Inter Milan, he just kind of concrete, made his plan absolutely concrete. The whole world knew about what is how he's gonna play 3-5-2 most of the times. Uh he did kind of fall back once or twice to 3-4-3 as well. And uh, you know. And obviously, Hakimi and Perisic obviously was a more known name. Hakimi is a young talent. Now, we obviously, he's gone to PSG. Uh, 15 goals and 23 assists out of these four guys where Young and Damian didn't really contribute too much was, was just astonishing. Uh, and, and, and his stats and how, they, how he played at Inter Milan was there to be seen. So, percolating into how, who's going to get... Uh, well, who are we talking about in Spurs assets? Uh, are these two wingers? Uh, I think... Bhavan uh, has, um, you, if you guys think there are other wingers who are in, in contention, I think Regulion and uh, Tanganga are two guys who might uh, be in, in uh, uh, you know, in contention for, for the for the wing backs. Uh, and Price at 5, uh, Regulion is at 5 million and Tanganga is at 4.9, if I'm not wrong, which we come to the next one. Uh, do, do you guys think these, these two guys are the assets and... Uh, and Conte is gonna stick to this way of playing because this is what has worked for him, Bhavan. Yeah, it's it's a very interesting start, Tanuj. Uh, in terms of the goal involvement, I think any uh, pair of fullbacks you look at, I think that's a astonishing return. Uh, in terms of the lineup, I think uh, the left wing is pretty sorted. Uh, you don't uh, see too much of a rotation there. Regulon will. Uh, most likely be the uh, player getting the majority of the minutes. The right wing is actually, uh, he does have options. So, he can play Tanganga in the back three and also have one of either uh, Doherty or Emerson Royal, uh, who's the Barcelona signing in the summer. So, either one of those would probably play. I think Emerson has looked pretty decent uh, in the games that he's played. So, he may uh, rotate uh, between Emerson Royal and Doherty and choose to leave Tanganga in the back three. The other problem that he also has is he doesn't really have, uh, you know, a great uh, suite of central defenders to go with. So, his yeah. options are pretty much dire uh, and he loves to have a ball playing uh, center back who can Correct. make the long pass. So, I think Dyer is the best fit there. Uh, apart from that, he has Romero uh, and he has one of Tanganga or uh, Rodon. So, those are pretty much, and Sanchez, of course. Uh, but I think the uh, the pretty much uh, pattern would be Dyer and two of, uh, and Romero and one of uh, Tanganga or uh, Rodon or uh, uh, Sanchez. So, uh, I'm yet to see, or it will be probably uh, taking some time for the defense to settle in. Uh, but, basis the attacking uh, involvement that uh, we've seen in the past, I think uh, 
it will be sooner rather than later that you would be looking for one of the wing backs and i think more likely it will be regulon because he's pretty good at overlapping on that flank and coming in no absolutely because he was uh, obviously people have he's gone out of the radar in the last uh, i think last season as well he didn't return too many times and he was bought for a reason because he was i think he came from villarreal if i'm not wrong he was sought after in europe regulon was real madrid real madrid sorry under 23 yeah. talent Yeah. Uh, he was right on the uh, radar for most of the clubs. He was bought, but uh, I, I, he hasn't got a really uh, apt manager for himself. I think maybe I think Conte might just exploit him. Uh, what he's really looking for in his in his in his as his wing back. Uh, Avin, uh, since you have a wild card left, uh, are Spurs assets on your radar? Yes, uh, they are. I mean, uh, we can't ignore uh, the the four or five. great run of fixtures uh, that's coming up i mean i can see leeds uh, brentford norwich all at home uh, even the away games are brighton and and burnley uh, but again uh, i'll have to wait and see for a couple of weeks to uh, see how the defense fares uh, they've been a little shaky so far i'm sure conte will, will manage it out but i'll i'll wait and see and then draft a defender in probably with through one of my free transfers but uh, i am i am planning to get either one of son or kane to start with and mm-hmm. probably might double uh, depending on how uh, things progress uh, from 13 onwards but there is definite one 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 of them coming in uh, probably add uh, you know either the dyer or or regulion uh, in on game in game week 14 through a through a free transfer but two uh, tottenham assets for sure um, you know as part of my wild card and wild card week after i mean they, they have the best if you if, can't, yeah can't ignore them. Correct. They are they are top uh, in terms of uh, if you see the fixtures here, they are top in the next uh, seven fixtures. Uh, you know, next apart from the next one, which I'm sure uh, Conte's impact would be seen. I'm not saying they're going to win it, but Everton is also not in 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 a good position these days. Uh, so, looking at the assets that they have, right, uh, and the pricing of the defenders, uh, Regulon is the most expensive at five, and others are all uh, sub five. You know. I, I'm not too really convinced about uh, Dyer, but Tangang at 4.4, Romero at 4.9. I'm sure I'm, if they are nailed on, so I think Romero especially might be nailed on at 4.9 with a team for a team with the Conte as a manager uh, looks looks quite uh, quite tempting and with the ownership of literally zero percent uh, looks looks quite good. Uh, before we finish everything, so the, yeah, these are the we are talking about the wing backs here now. If you talk, if you see Conte strikers. Uh, Yes, in in Chelsea he had uh, you know he had Costa and uh, I'm not sure who was his, who was other what other striking options he had at Chelsea. Uh, Giro, Giro, first time Giro. Giro was there. Giro was there, right? Now, if you look at Inter Milan, now his his play of double striker up front uh, has really really given him rich dividends. You know, if you see the numbers, Lukaku and Martinez uh, in 1920 season where they came second. 37 goals and seven assists, right? So 37 goals uh, and seven assists from 38 games uh, in in in, uh, in Italian league. Next season, where they won it, yes, the goals were literally similar, 37 to 41. But the number of assists which have gone up for the strikers is just unbelievable. From seven assists to 20 assists, which is like an average of 10 assists per striker, which I don't think, apart from Kane, who did it last season. Uh, I don't see any other striker in Premier League kind of uh, doing giving these kind of returns. And obviously, this is all down to all down to how the wing backs play, how his formation is. And as you said, you know, uh, he he likes to have a centre back, a solid centre back who's good with the ball, who's good in distribution, like you know uh, Van Dijk and uh, you know Rudiger and stuff like that. Uh, do you think Son, Son, or between Son or Kane, if you have to choose, uh, who would you go for first, Marvin? Have you there? That's um, I think that's the biggest question for everybody to answer, yeah. right? I think. Uh... Hi, Anuj. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, so I was saying I think the biggest question we have to uh, really solve for is which uh, of Kane and Son to go for to start, and I think if you see momentum sustaining, you might be even tempted to double up. Uh, the way most of our teams are set up, we have Salah, uh, who's absolutely not going anywhere. and one premium spot for a forward so 
logically it's easier to get to kane uh, you know most of us have wadi and you can bump up the extra 2 million and get to kane uh, but solely basis the numbers i think son looks like the more uh, threatening uh, player on display so far this season and i think uh, it will be a tough one for conte to uh, you know really uh, get kane motivated again i mean if you really look at it uh, he is anyways had his fair share of struggles and uh, you know with conte coming in suddenly is not going to turn around and say i'm not looking for a move and you know let's try and give this another shot so that's really the biggest challenge uh, that he'll face and i think it's really a 50 50 because if you look at the fixtures also uh, son would be good if they were looking to counter more but if you see the next four or five fixtures most yeah. of the teams tend to sit back and invite uh, you know attacks forward the likes of uh, leeds burnley even uh, norwich to some extent so they are not really going to make it easy for spurs to play on the counter they will have plenty of the ball so it's mm-hmm. a real 50 50 i would say uh, you know it's it's really uh, dependent on that one everton game uh, and i think kane has a great record mm-hmm. against everton Everton really yeah. look weak at the back as well, uh, particularly the centre backs. Uh, so that audition will really decide which one we go for. Uh, but if I had to move now, I think it will probably be uh, Son over Kane. But thankfully, I have other fires to put out, so probably it will be depending on the showing against Everton. In right, fact, I right. think just to add to what Bhavin is saying, I think mm. he's right. Fixtures will play an important role. If you see the next four, five fixtures uh, for uh, Tottenham. Uh, and if you compare that with the other big teams, uh, and you know, as he rightly said, Salah is not going anywhere. Uh, you can afford one more premium uh, player either in the midfield or or in the forward line. And then if you just kind of uh, uh, juggle around with a couple of players, you can still get both of them in. Now, Manu is the only team uh, that has a very very interesting set of fixtures coming up, but that's that starts only from uh, game week 15th onwards. So. Yeah. to really if somebody really wants to double up uh, this is the time uh, probably international break uh, if they do well against everton you see some sort of uh, you know magic uh, from conte coming in then leeds burnley brentford and norwich uh, i think a, a double up of kane and son uh, and just having sala these are three premium mids and then you can you can structure your team around those uh, uh, cheap and budget midfielders and and uh, forwards you can still get both of them in and then swap one of them out for either a fernandez or a ronaldo uh, when united fixtures kind of ease in uh, because the, you know you look at chelsea you look at uh, man city you look at other uh, teams with uh, premium assets i don't think their their fixtures are that appealing in the next 4 to 5 weeks uh, so there is a way to get both of them in uh, i will i'll try and see if i can get both uh, with my wild card starting 12 that could be a differential as well uh but yeah i mean there, there is a definite case to be made uh, for for double up on on uh, uh on on spurs when i say double up as in double up of son and kane uh, rather than just get a defender a cheap defender and and one of them you know that's i think that's where uh, the difference would lie now and i think this the conte inclusion now has really uh, given an opportunity for people who are really looking for opportunities to be different from from the template and how quickly they kind of go on to this conte uh, news and uh, you know let's let's call it conte band, uh, bandwagon in terms of rather than a players bandwagon uh double spurs assets we are we have always thought about kane and son uh, people might start now going for a combo of son versus son and one of the wing backs uh, but yes people would love to have an eye test you know two or three eye tests before they really get on to it but i i would say that a manager who's whose formation is known right uh, whose formation is known to the world for the last 5 6 years and he's done extremely well he's won titles for teams in his first season like for chelsea and second season for inter milan uh yes one i i would i personally i would give a one one week i test against everton everton yes it's a tough game yeah I would not be surprised if if they get a clean sheet. I will not be surprised at all if they get a clean sheet because what I've seen is any manager, new manager coming in, first straight away gets focus on the defense. Uh, if if I see a clean sheet, I'm I'm definitely going for one of one of their defenders from from game week twelve. Uh, there is uh, because people would, uh, as we have seen, you know, as we've seen the price rises, the way prices have risen in this in this uh, season. uh people will kind of go on quickly on it if if somebody's looking at it from a team value perspective uh 
How much time? How much time do you uh, are gonna give Bhavin for us really to get really convinced? As far as Spurs is concerned, I think uh, in terms of attack, uh, probably a week uh, because I think you can fairly second guess uh, the two attackers playing up front. I I don't see yeah. a large surprise there. Uh, defense maybe longer. Uh, I don't know. I'm. So actually, as we uh, look at it, I'm thinking if you look at the next five game weeks, and if you were to compare, say, Regulon to uh, say a City defender or a Chelsea defender, you think he matches the the output, say, from a James or a Diaz? Uh, uh where's Chelsea? Chelsea's Burnley home, Leicester away, Leicester away, Manchester United home. So I I. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if the fixtures do different. Definitely, yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you see yeah. City, United away next week, Everton home, West Ham home. So they have uh, not so easy uh, easy fixtures, uh, and West Ham has scored in every apart from one gaming they have scored against everyone. Uh, Chelsea, as we all know, is really kind of overperforming in terms of their uh, defense. Yes, you know their, their their wingers are scoring a lot, but I would say Tottenham has an easier fixture run uh, as compared to these two teams. Yeah, Anuj. In fact, in fact, if you yeah. see these four teams, uh, three of them are in the bottom four. I mean, it doesn't get uh, uh, you know better than this. Now, uh, I think yeah. Everton Everton is going to be a, a good quick eye test, and uh, you know there's 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 no point delaying beyond that. I mean, if people have transfers, uh, get one defender, one attacker in. Somebody holding wild card, you know, I would probably see two minimum, maybe three. But Leeds, Burnley, Norwich, uh, three out of the last four. Uh, and you know, if you miss this, then you know the opportunity might 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 be gone. So uh, yeah. and then as, as Bhavin was saying, I don't think any of the Man City or or uh, Liverpool or Chelsea defenders will probably match the haul. Uh, XG wise, all these three teams have been very poor. Norwich obviously has been uh, bottom of the table uh, pretty much in all stats. Leeds have been quite bad this year. Uh, Burnley has been conceding a lot of goals. So, you know, I, I guess I, I think a defender uh, can be swapped, whether it is a Chelsea or a Man City defender. It's much, much better to get a Tottenham defender in. No, absolutely. So that's where a, a manager's uh, personal call and, and his judgment would really matter now. All right. It'll be interesting to see. Uh, would be. Uh, interesting to see how Everton uh, kind of fares against Tottenham. Uh, I think he was yesterday. He did uh, take a training session yesterday or today. I'm not sure. Today, I think. Uh, I think he was on the he was on the training field. Whether I don't know whether he took the session or not. But uh, he will definitely have some kind of an impact uh, on the game. All right. Uh, let's now get on to United, uh, especially the formation, how they changed from defeat to Liverpool to the last game week against the Spurs. Bhavan, uh, all yours. Thanks, Anuj. And I think uh, it's a fairly interesting move. I'm hoping the Varane injury uh, yesterday is not too serious because personally, yeah. I think uh, the 3-5-2 is much better suited to the players that Ronaldo has. So, uh, you know, just in terms of the formation, I think uh, he's now tried it for two games, uh, the Champions League game as well as the game against Spurs. Uh, the idea that he's really going with is playing three centre-backs, uh, using Shaw and Van Bissaka in the full-back positions and then having three mids, uh, Bruma is the most advanced uh, midfielder, flanked by two forwards. Uh, so, he went with Ronaldo and uh, Cavani against Spurs and then he went with Ronaldo and Rashford against uh, Atlanta. Uh, so, a couple of uh, things why I think this formation really looks uh, good for us. Uh, the first and the most important thing is it helps us get the most out of the two number nines we have. I think there are very few teams uh, in the Premier League, uh, more so even in Europe, uh, who really can boast of having two world class number nines. So, I think this formation helps him get the best out of both the number nines that he has. Uh, and the way in which uh, the two number nines are working together. Uh, he doesn't really need to rely on only Cavani and Ronaldo. So, for example, when we saw the Spurs game, uh, Cavani was more often than not leading the line and holding back the ball, and Ronaldo was playing slightly off him. 
uh, and then in atlanta game he used ronaldo as the focal point and rashford played kind of across him so it's a great formation in which he can use not only cavani and ronaldo but also rashford who's look extremely sharp uh, and i think once uh, united fixtures turn for the better he could be a great option for you to double up he's cheaper than uh, bruno and easily offers you a way into the united attack if you want to go aggressive uh, so those are kind of the three players so the two forward line positions he can kind of fit in very very easily uh, the other good thing really is that he is able to shield the midfield and i think that's been the biggest problem defensively for us uh, so it helps us keep the ball in the center of the park add the extra man in midfield have another uh, you know kind of center back to to uh, block the balls out uh so defensively also uh, you know uh, at least the spurs game we definitely looked much much better uh the only uh, criticism probably uh, is that he may have got the right uh, formation uh, but maybe not the right personnel so i think over a period of time you will see some sort of uh, evolution for example you could easily see even if varan is injured uh, he could have maguire bay and uh, van bisaka play in the back three uh, van bisaka is fairly quick makes uh, you know uh, great tackles and recoveries so he can easily play in the back three against weaker teams and he can use sancho on the uh, right flank uh, as well so that's really another option for him to uh, consider because the only uh, squad criticism that he will start getting if he feels this formation too often is he doesn't get to play sancho uh, and probably greenwood also though greenwood can play central he's never really uh, you know Uh, wanted to play too much on the flank he always tends to drift in so he can still fit greenwood in but he can't fit sancho in uh, so that's really the player reshuffle that he can do to fit sancho in as well uh, in terms of uh, you know the uh, the overall play the all, the other factor that also helps uh, is it gets the best out of bruno i think he's one of the best in terms of finding yeah. attackers with his long passes and clever movements Uh, so i really like the formation uh, i think it's probably here to stay uh, if he and i think varan is kind of the key because you need that one central strong defender as the focal point in a back three uh, to be able to hold everything together uh, so if varan is only out for the odd game uh, i see no reason why we won't carry this forward and from a fantasy perspective i think while you will wait for uh, the fixture to clear up uh but once you uh, do see a good run of fixtures if this formation sustains i think shaw could be a great pick uh, he has been fairly advanced uh, and our left wing has done better than the right in terms of attacking involvement and chance creation yeah. uh, and of course uh, rashford and uh, ronaldo those are kind of the two attackers to really focus on because cavani will always tend to be in and out uh, you would not bank on him getting uh, you know regular yeah. starts yeah. probably 25 games uh, a season is good enough as a target for him uh, but i really think it opens up possibilities for rashford and ronaldo to profit so to be honest i i have seen uh, i saw i saw last week game weeks uh, as a last match against spurs and i thought bruno was fantastic i think he was his his crosses and his the way the his ability to just find uh, you know either rashford or uh, cavani or ronaldo right at the 6 yard box i think it was just fantastic so if i were to once as you as you mentioned about uh, united fixtures turning i would be really really keen to look at getting bruno in uh, you know he's if and especially with this formation uh, which is which is 352 and uh, do you think they're going to stick with this formation or with against against the top team as well for, for example against city uh, would they stick with this I think City is the toughest one to call Anuj uh, simply because I don't think he'll risk Varane again. Uh, he's already risked mm. Maguire and probably a uh, bit of a mistake there if you ask me. Uh, so risking Varane would be a big one. Uh, so probably that might be the reason why he might move to a back four but I think that could probably be only a City game trend and if Varane comes back after the international break there is no reason why he won't go back to a 3-5-2. Right, right, right. And the other thing really is, uh, yeah. you know, and I was saying, uh, as I was saying, the Sancho uh, conundrum is there to solve. Uh, he can slot in at uh, at right wing back uh, because Van Bissaka can drift in. The other player that really uh, kind of needs to fit into this system is probably Pogba uh, because domestically he still has that ban, uh, so it's easy to play two defensively minded midfielders, so to speak, along with Bruno. with pogba yeah. coming in that balance will also be tested so that is another one to check but then again if you see the champions league game he played pogba and bruno together so it's not yeah. that 
he is not uh, against that so so that's really where we are i think this formation could work did sancho play uh, yes yes sir no it was van bissaka again on the right yeah sancho is another as you said a big big conundrum to be solved Uh, I think against I mean, easier uh, teams yeah. he can he can take that chance uh, because Van Bissaka the crosser and the attacker is is really uh, short in terms of his decision making uh, so Correct. sooner rather than later he will be happy to try that against weaker opposition so for example we have Watford immediately after the break uh, right. that could be a great game to try uh, Sancho on the right flank. Oh, you're right. Uh, so United fixtures uh, City and then Watford and. What for is just right sandwich between City and Chelsea. Uh, yeah, and then even after that is Arsenal, Crystal Palace, and yeah, after that so the how the fixtures kind of turn in your favor. Uh, I mean, is the same as the case in your case, since you'll be whenever you use a wild card, you will be looking at uh, United assets from fourteen fifteen game week onwards. Whenever yeah, Spurs run ends. Not immediately. Uh, no, uh, looking at most probably wild carding next week, uh, which is the international break. Uh, Spurs uh, fixtures obviously look the tastiest. I will, uh, uh, you know, fill in the the cheap players from uh, Brentford. You know, we have spoken about it last week. Uh, Crystal mm-hmm. Palace has a decent run of uh, three four games, uh, and you know, Wolves are kind of okay till about game week fifteen. Uh, it's only after that I'll probably get uh, one or two uh, manual sets, but that will be again uh, through uh, through my free transfers, but not immediately. Uh, I still not convinced. Uh, at least till the game week 14, uh, Arsenal home. I I, yeah. would, I would say that it will still be a little kg. Uh, there's goals being leaked everywhere. Uh, I mean, and Ronaldo is the only one who seems to be you know in some sort of scoring form, and he'll be too he'll be too expensive. Uh, again, the same kind of comparison we have to do. Is he better? Uh, is he a better asset uh, than a Kane uh, with the fixture coming up? Uh, you know, we'll probably look at Kane. So, not for the next four weeks. Uh, after that, uh, definitely. Fifteenth onwards, uh, you have to get uh, Fernandez or Ronaldo, one of them. Right. So, so, so we have uh, we've done a comparison here, uh, and the strategy is to really tell our give our viewers and listeners about whether they can rotate between uh, Kane and Ronaldo because Ronaldo's. Hall last week and now has suddenly, uh, not suddenly, but yeah, it's given given people an option that he can score against big teams. Uh, I'm not going to get into the argument whether Spurs is a big team or not and how bad or good they were, uh, but I, he still scored. Uh, he still scored yesterday twice, so he is he is in super flow. I think uh, as good a flow as what Salah is in right now. Uh, So this is this is the strategy that in terms of the rotation between Kane and Ronaldo. Obviously, everybody knows Kane has not been in the best of forms. Uh, one, I think, one goal and just one assist in, in the whole season as of now. And obviously, Ronaldo is uh, around four goals and uh, five, five, four, 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 I think four, four goals and three assists. Uh, Pavin, wh- wh- you mentioned what strikers do you have right now? I have Vardy. Uh, can't wait to get rid of him. Uh, and I have. Uh, Said Maximan and uh, who's the third striker? I keep forgetting. Uh, I think I have said Maximan and I have Antonio, of course. Yeah, so he's the third one. Uh, so once you once you get rid of, to be honest, okay, it is good that you get what Vardy. Uh, if you see Leicester's fixtures as well, you know Leeds is next away, which is which he can definitely score. Chelsea is the only one in the next seven or eight fixtures which which he very might blank again. Then is Watford, Southampton away. Villa away, Newcastle home, and then obviously Tottenham home, which is just, uh, so, so. So out of the next five fixtures, it's only one where he might not score. But are you are you looking to uh, get rid of him soon, sooner? Anuj, I really uh, think uh, Vardy is is kind of uh, at least for me over the years he's turned out to be the perfect role. Every time I buy him, he tends to. Turn in a series of two pointers, and he just waits for me to sell him, and then haul big. Uh, so <laughs> I, I really think uh, it's the Leeds game which, uh, which will kind of decide my uh, way forward. Uh, right. So I think if if uh, Kane looks sharp, uh, and if Vardy doesn't do much against Leeds, there is the obvious temptation to do Kane uh, for Vardy, and then keep him for four weeks, and then move to Ronaldo, right? Uh, it also gives you a great uh, backup captaincy option. I know everybody is on Perma Salah for now, uh, but 
one more blank or one more low hole and again you will tend to see a little bit of a distribution when it comes to captaincy uh, so that could be one route to go down uh, or if conversely son looks the better pick then probably uh, you know the idea could be to stick to wadi get son in uh, have kind of three premiums but then again you have two 10 million players so you can fit them in uh, not impossible yeah. to do and then take it forward till uh, you know game week uh, 15 where again son can make an easy uh, entry point for rashford uh, for example so it's not really uh, a bad move either uh, so it's really about looking at the next game week i think that will be a crucial decision point in terms of who passes right. the eye test and what wadi does and it will be i think uh, next week onwards uh, whatever wild cards are left will come flying in like aven Uh, and i think the the template will open up again that's really the way things seem to be yeah yeah because i think before conte signed had conte not uh, signed up or he was not really sought after by tottenham i think uh, people were willing to look away from spurs assets even when their fixtures were turning in favor uh, because of how they were been performing and if you even if you see the rotation if you were to do between these two guys uh, in terms of premium forwards I think the next game week is the only game week, uh, as per the sticker, which where both might not be able to give a return. But otherwise, together you can easily rotate between them. Uh, only game week thirteen, United has Chelsea, where whereas Kane might have Burnley away, and uh, it looks like like a solid rotation uh, which can be done. Uh, price, and I'm sure the both of them would. Sooner, sooner rather than later, they might the prices might just start rising as well. One is twelve point one, Ronaldo is twelve point four, uh, and Ronaldo has fallen. He he was at twelve point seven, right? He had reached twelve point seven, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, twelve point seven. Yeah, twelve point seven. Yeah, right. So he he has fallen quite a bit. Kane, anyways, from twelve point five, season beginner at twelve point five, now at twelve point one. Uh, it won't take too long for them to reach back to their original prices and even cross that. Uh, uh, so I mean, anyways, you are. Uh, You would be looking at uh, Son first, and then Kane, and then Ronaldo. Uh, when the fixture is turned in their favor, that's the plan. Uh, once I start making the template, I know uh, I might see if I can, uh, if there's a possibility of doubling up both Kane and Son. There's no harm, uh, you know, doubling them, uh, doubling up on on both of them for game week 12 and 13. Uh, if I have to move to uh, an alternate, I can always always do that. uh so that will be the plan uh, but if i'm not able to fit both uh, i'll probably start with uh, with kane uh, you know as as bagun was saying earlier uh, there 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 is a spot for a premium uh, forward uh, i am not looking at wadi all my forwards right now are are pretty cheap uh, and i have some uh, funds in in the bank i just moved uh, uh, you know kdb to esr so there is enough mm-hmm. funds available so I'll start with Kane, uh, maybe double up with Son, and then move to either Ronaldo or uh, uh, Fernandez. Uh, again, depends on on how right. things shape up in terms of United in the next three four weeks. You mentioned ESR, uh, and I am you know have been avoiding him for the last two three game weeks. He has been hauling uh, quite up as in every 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 other game week. Uh, you're an Arsenal fan, uh, ESR. Do you think he is over? achieving uh, in terms of the xg and the xa kind of metrics he has been giving more points than he, he should have <laughs> much more much more in fact uh, he has a lower xg xa than uh, uh, than saka uh, saka yeah. has almost uh, double that uh, value but uh, he seems to be the one who outscores saka every week in week out in fact it's interesting uh, uh, read that i was uh, going through last week uh, Uh, I think the position that he's getting into, the way he's playing in this new Arteta system, uh, has a lot to do with uh, some of the goals and assists that he's getting. Uh, if you remember, he had a he had a good uh, purple patch uh, towards the end of last season, where he uh, yeah, kind of worked yeah. seriously and he scored a few goals and had uh, you know good performances. Uh, since then, if you compare the first ten weeks uh, of this season as as uh, compared to a few of this the the, the later part of the last season, uh, he's been actually having. far lesser touches uh, outside of the box uh, far lesser uh, touches in the in the middle of the park uh, his uh, uh, passing has actually gone down the number of key passes made uh, uh, per game but what has actually shot up and doubled is you know the, the number of shots he takes number of shots on target uh, 
with little bit of stability in the midfield you know party after his uh, injury has come back quite well you know he's kind of marshaling mm-hmm. the field quite well and with the partnership in central defense ben white and gabriel i think that is uh, turning out to be pretty solid uh, so there is no need for him to kind of drop uh, too deep uh, for some of those passes he's always there in and around the box uh, saka is more of a winger he you know kind of uh, falls back and keeps running up and down uh, but uh he, whatever he has lost in terms of the general passes around the game he's actually made up with uh, the shots taken in the box and some of those are actually translating into goals uh, so that, that that's the reason why you know we we've, we've seen some of these uh, odd goals uh, uh you know yeah. up and up and about and if you look at the price to value here uh, uh, anuj and the and the team that he plays for obviously arsenal uh, you know we've just kind of knocking on top four now uh, we've had a good run of fixtures after the first three games uh, you know we've kind of unbeaten in about nine games including the carabao cup uh you know great run of fixtures uh, obviously except for a couple of games and, and when we were we talking about leicester last week right i was surprised uh, that we actually got a clean sheet in one two nil i was i would have been happy yeah, with that. Yeah. uh so arsenal has been you know showing some steel and uh, it has allowed uh, some of these young players to play play freely so if somebody were to pick one of them i would still go with esr uh, you know i know that the data doesn't uh, uh, prove uh but he's been in the right positions at the right time uh just off the striker and getting he's getting those shots you know once in a while it's bound to go in and that's where uh, you know his value is much more than say for example saka at say 0.7 higher uh, uh, price it doesn't make sense to get him in right 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 no perfect uh, uh because i have been uh, 5.6 i have embuemo and i think uh, obviously he didn't he didn't uh, feature uh, last week he was injured uh and i'm not too sure what whether he's going to be fit for the weekend so if there's any news before the friday early kick off uh i think I, that, that's a very easy uh shift to esr bavin uh you mentioned in the second minute of today's session a name called gallagher so i'm sure uh, i'm sure his his last week's uh, performance would have apart from whether he was he was on your bench but he would have kind of given you that satisfaction that yes you were right in picking him getting him in your squad but yes obviously he was in a bench that's a different thing but uh, i'm sure you're going to stick with him now absolutely anush and i think uh, if if you really look at it in terms of uh, the fixtures as well i got him in on my wild card i think on game week 7 mm-hmm. uh, and uh, the idea really was to look at this stretch because if you look at from now till game week 20 i think crystal palace are comfortably at the top in terms of uh, the fixture ticker uh, they have a great run coming up uh, and the other thing that really worked against gallagher for the last 2 uh, 3 games was uh, the absence of wilfred zaha because what tends to happen with palace is they are you know completely different when they play with zaha and different when they play without zaha with zaha there in the squad you he'll always tend to draw two three defenders to uh, kind of the ball and that leaves a lot of space uh, space up in the center which gallagher is great at uh, you know capturing and running and making that last run for so i think if you really look at the budget midfield and and maybe we can just uh, you know do a rank because if you look at most team structures uh, you will tend to have sala one premium mid maybe son uh, or foden uh, depending on who you prefer and then there are two to three uh, kind of budget six and a half and below slots yeah. available Uh, so if you really look at uh, fixtures and uh, stats combined i would say uh, my top 3 for the next 4 5 would be embuemo uh, gallagher and uh, probably one of the arsenal mids i have saka it's another 50 50 that's gone against me but if i had to pick today uh, i agree with ivan uh, can't uh, look beyond uh, smith row so those would be kind of the three to uh, really look at uh, one other player who really stands out is corne i think he's looked very very yeah. sharp uh, the only issues been that he's not really played consistently uh, 90 minutes across and uh, his fitness tends to be a little up and down uh, and the fact that yeah. burnley don't have immediately great fixtures gives you probably a couple of weeks to wait and monitor uh, but if i was to rank my top 3 it will be uh, uh, you know uh, who was the first name yeah it would be embuemo gallagher and uh, smithro in that order uh you know a word on zaha because i i feel zaha i think we had we had discussed this i think in the third or the fourth part of the uh, season i think game week 3 or game week 4 that zaha is such a character which where managers don't want to pick him up 
Well, what I've seen uh, now is obviously now Vieira has had more uh, influence on the team, and I think Zaha has now looked to be more of a team man now because he has had a couple of assists where he earlier he used to just you know go 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 for the shot uh, on on target. And he used to get frustrated, and and he whenever he, he gets fouled, he's always in a foul mood, uh, ready to pick up a fight with everyone. Uh, last two three game weeks, this is my reading. Uh, maybe I the highlights that I saw must have sh- shown that, but I think he has now become more of a team player. Uh, is more I think Vera has really kind of uh, shown and you know put a put an arm around his shoulders. And, uh, you know, you know this is what we are aiming for this season, and uh, you are a big part of it. Maybe he has been told that you are just not the only part of it, you know. Uh, so maybe he has been kind of uh, shown shown the right way, and Vieira might have done a good job there. Uh, Zaha, the only thing is again the price, right? Uh, Six point nine, uh, but he has been scoring consistently. So that's why whenever we show this uh, stat about budget midfielders, his name is always in top five, top six. Uh, the only thing is, yes, Gallagher is right there, and. Uh, uh, I think Zaha is only the only one asset who is on penalties. People still don't want to go for him. Uh, otherwise, any penalty taker, people are usually uh, want to eye that kind of an asset. Uh, Aven, uh, any Crystal Palace uh, asset in your radar? Yeah, uh, you know, either one of these. Uh, they, they have a tasty run you know, of fixtures again. If I have to uh, put in Son Ken both along with Salah. Uh, I think I'll probably have to go with uh, uh, either. I mean, Gallagher is. I don't know what his price is, honestly. Uh, Five point seven. Yeah, Five point so seven. He, yeah. yeah, so he becomes he becomes a obvious choice there. And and just just look at the fixtures. Uh, again, we don't expect uh, some of these assets to score week in and week out. But if you look at the fixtures, you you know an average five six pointer uh, over the course of four or five weeks will do for you. Uh, and you know we'll have to fill in. The interesting thing is whether you you want to add somebody from the defense. That that's that's a big question mark. Um, yeah. You know you you would have one defender from Tottenham, probably one of the defenders from you know Chelsea. Continue in your team, one of the cheaper ones. Uh, but then you you tend to rotate the third defender depending on the fixtures, and then they seem to have a decent number of fixtures. So that's something that we'll have to be figured out. But Gallagher, uh, you know, he has been in a lot of teams recently, and I probably will get him in. I, I would prefer him over Zaha. Uh, to be honest, Gallagher is a 9.1 uh, ownership, so you know, still, still under, under owned, um, and uh, the way he's performed. Yeah, to be honest, you would have to kind of take it with a pinch of salt. Uh, City was playing with 10 men. Uh, that was an, a, another, anyways, a, a dubious decision. So, but, but apart from that, it was City at home, and still the, the way he was pressing forward. I think he was involved in the first game before the red card as well. He stole the ball from Laporte, and uh, you know, was he gave an assist. Uh, so, so yeah. So I think Gallagher looks to be uh, too good to be ignored, uh, in, in my opinion. Uh, a person who's top, topping the charts is uh, Bowen. Has and he's easily outclassed Ben Rama. Uh, from West Ham. Uh, anyways, Bandrama has now been offloaded by a lot of managers. West Ham's fixtures are the worst in the next four, so maybe people are not going to look at him. But he, he has been returning uh, very, very consistently. Uh, Mount in play, uh, which was which was a painful experience for a lot of people who got in Mount uh, after that uh, had hat trick. Uh, Grealish was uh, again uh, City didn't score at all. Rafinha finally scored, um, and I think he's the only asset from Leeds who really is interested in scoring. Uh, as far as all the owners are concerned, uh, Foden. Do you guys have any City defenders right now? Uh, obviously, Avin mentioned that he has got rid of uh, KDB. Uh, Avin, you have Foden, right? No, I have uh, gone for the double up in defense. So I have Diaz and Cancelo. All right, no right, right. Are you continuing with double city defense or not really? I mean, they haven't done anything much uh, ever since the wild card uh, was played. So, kind of uh, very tempted to move Diaz on for somebody else. Uh, just wary of uh, how many transfers I want to use up in defense. So, I've already gone for Trent. Uh, another transfer to be booked in defense is a little difficult. But then, having said that, you know, the way the Chelsea fullbacks are going. Uh, you know, even if you do that move for a hit, you would probably think they will cover it one week or the other. So, so Cancelo is going nowhere, uh, but Diaz is one that probably might get the chop soon. 
Look at Spurs. Yeah. <laughs> maybe Spurs, maybe Chilwell. Uh, I've kind of still not uh, given up on hoping to catch the right uh, wing back. Uh, we failed so far at it, but never too late. Do, do, to try do, you, have, do you have any Chelsea you want right now? I have Rudiger. So I went for Alonso oh. and uh, Rudiger on my wild card. Uh, of course, of course. The exact week where Alonso started to uh, you know, get benched uh, and then had to move to Trent. So another uh, transfer is due. Uh, probably either Chilwell or Stegelon at some point in the future. That's a call that I need to take. Right, right. In fact, that's another name that I saw the last one. Uh, very interesting uh, potential uh, cheap uh, mid Maxwell Cornet. We haven't spoken about him, but uh, I think the FDR next four shows 15th. Uh, that's probably because they are playing Chelsea next. But outside of that, uh, you know, they have good, decent set of uh, four five fixtures. Uh, let's look at Burnley. Yeah. Uh, where do we see Burnley? Yeah, so it's Crystal Palace, yeah, home, Tottenham, home, okay, Wolves in Newcastle, yeah. and uh, you know two double digit hauls in the last two weeks. Uh, I know could be a could be interesting differential, and uh, at six. If you're really trying to put in those uh, two or three mids uh, in the five and a half, six and a half kind of range, uh, he could be one of those uh, picks, especially keeping the next four or five games, games in mind. And he plays out of position as well. So, his, his I think his, all his four goals, his finishing has been really top-notch. Uh, yeah. uh, I think he's come from the French League. Uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not remembering which team has he come from. But uh, as I think Bhavan pointed out earlier, he has a history of injuries. So... Yeah, I think Leon. he's still. He was, he yeah. was at Lyon, uh, just saying 30 goals. Oh, yeah. In, yeah. yeah, 30 odd goals in about 180 games. Uh, Ivory Coast uh, player. I mean, he has a decent, uh, uh, you know, goals to games ratio. And uh, right. as I said, at, at six, he could be one of those uh, picks where you can leave him as a fourth mid or, or maybe have him on the bench. No, especially uh, Lyon is not. Uh, obviously, they haven't done wonders in, in uh, French league, but they, I think they, they did. Uh, they did, they did compete in the uh, Europa League. So, he's left a team uh, who are who have been playing Europa League and come to Burnley. Uh, yeah. Thinking of something that he, he wants to prove himself here. Uh, and he wants to be fit so that he can move move up the ladder in terms of the teams. So, so I think usually a lot of, lot of strikers who come from different smaller leagues, uh, with all due respect to the French League, but they, they try to... Uh, Enter the Premier League from as a smaller team and then kind of t- take it take it from there. All right, let's move on to our next game week fixtures. Uh, so, reminder to everyone: it's a Friday night fixture. Uh, it says Diwali in India, so Thursday night is going to be busy with that. Uh, so, it's a Friday night fixture. Uh, Southampton versus Aston Villa. Uh, it will be again a very very nervy call in terms of Livramento. <laughs> Uh, are you, are, have you guys been benching him or keeping him in the squad? I don't have him. I don't have him. So, oh, that's, that's, him. Not a, no, that's not a problem for me. I mean, I have McCarthy in, the, in goal. Uh, he's, uh, he's stacked up against uh, uh, Sanchez. Uh, I think Brighton has an easier fixture at uh, uh, home right. at so I'll go with him. But Liframento has been the story of the season so far, honestly. Yeah, he has been. He has been. Uh, Marvin, you have him? Absolutely. Uh, he came on uh, in place of Embu Emo for me uh, last oh, week. Uh, right. So, thankfully got his clean sheet. Though, having said that, honestly, I think uh, this week uh, it will be a tough one for uh, them to keep out Villa. I think Villa, have, though they've looked poor, uh, not had results in the last four weeks. Uh, but I think the squad and the manager are under real pressure. So, oh, real, my real sense pressure. is... My sense is, uh, you know, there is a decent amount of bonding in the team. Uh, they tend to play for each other. They tend to play for the manager. So, I think they'll come out all guns blazing. Even if they don't get three points, I definitely bank them to score. Uh, so, I don't see a clean sheet for Livramento uh, this week, at least. Uh, next week, again, you have a task at hand because he plays Norwich. So, another tough decision to... Yeah. Uh, to to look forward to, but uh, but this week I think in fact if you look at defenses all through uh, in terms of fixtures, uh, City are away to United. Uh, even though you may not uh, you know uh, expect United to win, uh, you would probably expect them to get the odd goal, uh, the odd yeah. moment of magic from Ronaldo or Bruno or somebody. Uh, so don't see uh, you know much there for the City boys. Uh, neither for Southampton. I think uh, the only ones who look good are. 
of course arsenal uh, everybody will have probably some cover in defense and chelsea uh, who play burnley so those are kind of the two defenses to probably yeah, look at arsenal chelsea brentford people who might or have gotten uh, though, though they were shocking actually last game week uh, against burnley uh, and I, i don't think it was primarily due to the new keeper uh, who was a raya replacement but i think the the defense was totally out of the place and people are shocked because they haven't seen brentford like this ever in the last nine games yeah. so yeah. yeah so they're still wondering whether to go for uh, the defensive assets or not uh, uh crystal palace wolves will be a good one um everton spurs like as my my full focus is on that uh leeds leicester i doubt leicester is going to keep a clean sheet they have been horrible at the back uh and i doubt liverpool also will keep a clean sheet uh and i'm really worried about that game to be honest it's uh, uh sala captaincy yes maybe but uh, dropping points now for liverpool after the way they dropped it last game will be will be uh, catastrophe uh obviously the biggest game is the manchester derby uh it's uh, it's at old trafford no sorry it's at uh, yeah it's at old trafford old trafford old trafford yeah uh i think united has had uh, wood over city in the last few derbies i think we did uh, fairly well in the last couple yeah last season i think we did the double over them if i remember correctly right and right. Uh, that was uh, that was a great result but i think uh, this one will be a completely different ball game uh, if varan is out which is more likely is the case uh, and city are coming off the back of a defeat so it's probably the yeah. worst time to play city uh, they will not kind of uh, sit back and let uh, united have the ball so i don't expect uh, three points i would any day take a draw and run with it uh, but probably a scoring draw is is what i'd hope for So United hasn't lost in the last four uh, derbies, so that's that's the stat. Uh, and I think uh, at home, lo- at home it was a draw last season. Last two last season they won, and they have been winning at Etihad for the last two times. So, so it's been a good record in the last. Uh, I think I think it's all under Ole. So uh, my only my only worry is that how fresh will they be because they had again. a full 95 minute match last night and every player was right at it till the end especially ronaldo uh, obviously it's a it's a it's a saturday afternoon uh, uk time kind of a fixture they still have three days to recover but it's city uh, city played city played tonight yeah city city's playing tonight city played tonight in- yeah so we have a extra days rest but uh, yeah. we were away city is at home so that kind of even itself yeah yeah i mean how do you see this game what's your prediction draw uh, i i i think uh, united will probably play not to lose uh, it it's important from a epl perspective uh, not from uh, you know what is happening on the champions league side uh, city again as bhavan said one day's rest i don't i don't think it will matter much but it still adds up uh, i'm not too sure how you know he would want to ole would want to manage ronaldo from here on because there are a lot of uh, issues mm. coming in uh, and you know festive season will, will probably be upon us in a month's time you know, that's yeah. something that obviously this is a game not to bench him uh, i'm just saying uh, that's something which will probably go a long way in figuring out how united uh, fare till december but i i see uh, somehow you know united kind of getting a draw uh, that's you know usually derbies are that kind of games uh, I, i don't think we'll see a 5-0 kind of a uh, performance from united uh, it is more about how they set up how they play uh, than how much right. they score um so expecting a draw uh, but a city win uh, you know will will be good i mean i it's, it's not something that i will be you know unhappy about but uh, draw mo- most likely right right uh captaincy calls uh, if anybody is going against sala or you know leeds uh, le- le- uh, wadi is a good option against leeds uh, but it's too risky yeah i mean what are you saying I mean, I was uh, I was tempted to I'm tempted to go with a contra captaincy call this week. I've been in, uh, you know Salah has been Tony pretty much either Tony or maybe ESR against Watford. Uh, I just I just think there are at least three goals there. Uh, you know, we spoke about three one being Arsenal's favourite scoreline. I think I probably expect three goals, uh, not not more, not less from Arsenal and ESR probably will be on the score sheet again. Uh, and and Tony, you know, again Norwich. 
uh, whoever plays them uh, gets a lot of goals. But I don't know where yeah. the goals will come from, honestly, uh, from ben- Brentford. So Tony is a little risky. Uh, it is either ESR or uh, you know you you can't uh, you know bet against Salah. Just just leave him on. Uh, Liverpool are going to score, uh, and he probably will will give you some points. But I don't think it will yeah. be covered. Tony Tony is a perfect example where he passes the eye test, but his stats are horrible. Right, two games, two oh, sorry, two two goals in ten games, and people are after him as if he's just gonna, he's just lining himself up for hat tricks and so on and so forth. I think it's because also because of the Brentford whole Brentford story, as in how well they've been playing and against how well they're played against big teams. Uh, but his stats are absolutely uh, against it. Uh, absolutely, I haven't got him. I'm thinking of getting him. Whether should I know? And Norwich is a game again. You come under pressure of the community that you know Norwich against Norwich. You have to get people. Uh, Rafinha also scored against Norwich. Uh, Everybody is scoring against Norwich. So, Bhavan, you, you you don't have Tony, but are you? Uh, what's what's the plan with Saint Maximin? No, no, I mean, uh, Tony is like four, yeah. two pointers uh, for the last four games, uh, and you know it's frustrating. You're right. I've been uh, I've been holding on to Tony since game week one. Uh, so, but. Uh, this is probably the game. Uh, again, like we spoke last time, that this was the game for this was the week for Rafina, uh, and this is this is yeah. the week for Tony. Uh, he has to play a double-digit haul to kind of make up for what he did in the last three to four weeks. Uh, if he's not doing anything here, I, I I doubt. You know, he'll he probably will have the stats, but he probably I don't think he'll, he'll end up scoring too many goals this season if he can't perform this week. Uh, Bhavan, Maximin to Tony. Yeah, I uh, I think it's the easier transfer to make uh, this week, Anuj. Honestly, uh, Maximan has done zil since I picked him on the wild card. Uh, I also have Antonio, so it's a little bit of a dilemma in the sense that for the next five, Antonio also doesn't seem to have a great run of fixtures. Uh, and if I do Antonio to uh, Tony, it gives me the extra one million to be able to get either Wadi to Kane or go into the additional funds I'll need to get. Uh, son in uh, if i so choose mm-hmm. so it's a it's a tough one uh, i think attack in general has been a tough one to pick because if you say for a minute rule out tony uh, where else are you going to go there are very slim pickings in general across uh, yeah. so probably you know you can look at one premium uh, and even if you play a 352 or a 442 which i think is the best formation right now uh, because you don't have uh, too many strikers that stand out, you would still by default look at Tony simply because of his fixture run. So I think in the next six, seven, uh, he has Norwich, he has Newcastle, he has Burnley, yeah. he has Leeds. I mean, the fixtures are a godsend. So it's hard to kind of uh, not have Tony as as the second forward. Uh, so I think Tony will uh, most likely come in. Uh, for whom is a call that I need to take. Uh, both could easily make way. The other budget forward I really like is Wang. Uh, I think he's looked really sharp. Uh, yeah. Jimenez, of course, is slightly expensive and tends to be uh, you know, slightly more withdrawn when it comes to attacks. Uh, so Wang is an equally good option to look at. The only problem is that fixtures tend to toughen after the next four. So if Correct. you have to yeah. commit, you have to get them in early and uh, probably Tony is a higher priority than Wang. So that's really how things stand. I think in terms of captaincy, uh, this is another week where Salah will have a runaway effective ownership. I, my guess is uh, last week was probably a record of all time. I've never seen somebody yeah. have 195, 197% EO. Uh, I would tend to think uh, it will be slightly lower, but I still think he'll be there 170, 180% or so. So it's a big, big risk to not have him. And, and I mean, if he hauls, then you are probably another 20 points behind the, the template. So, that's too big a risk for yeah, anybody true, true. to take. Yeah. And I think uh, because, probably, of, I think because, the, of, because of the Chelsea wingbacks as well, they have also, for, for a few uh, FPL managers, uh, even the Chelsea wingbacks have become a captaincy option now. Yeah, I was, I was about but to say that. It's too uh, tough to call who plays, right? So, I mean, for example, on a lot of forums, you are reading that James will play on the right, but on the left, you don't know. Alonso may be favoured because of his height and so on and so forth. So, mm-hmm. it's a tough call. Uh, the other benefit with Salah is nailed. He'll probably get 80 yeah. minutes for sure, uh, unless an injury surprise comes in. So, it's really hard to move away. I think next week is when it gets interesting. Uh, if Salah blanks this week and Spurs look good, uh, then next week the captaincy tends to open up. 
uh, but this week i don't think uh, you'll see many punters moving away yeah. from sala yeah you're right i think next week is uh, tottenham is playing leeds uh, and liverpool have arsenal liverpool, liverpool have arsenal united is watford liverpool arsenal yeah. and it tends to be either a 4 nil or 5 nil so you know that's <laughs> I am right. not too sure yeah, about. Yeah, the history has been. Yeah, I am not too sure about not captain Kala for that game, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, you brought it up, Anuj. Uh, James could be those surprise, uh, you know, one of those surprise captaincy picks. I don't think I'll take a chance with with him, but I am sure some people would. Uh, clean sheet probably is coming. He's going to start, and uh, you know, maybe one attacking return, so that gets you over close to ten points, uh, which is. what you would expect from a captain you know this is this is the game this is the game week where you just need one attack or uh, one uh, return from your defender apart from the clean sheet uh, which these days is not a big thing uh, getting an assist from a defender and and he might just straight away get into uh, 10 11 points and sala okay. against west ham there yeah, are that's... chances that he, he might not score as well so yeah yeah that's two goals right uh, uh, to get him to 11 12 points yeah so so yeah it'll be interesting one i'll be i'll be surprised if he gets a point for a clean sheet because i doubt liverpool will keep a clean sheet as well so it'll be interesting one uh, i hope this game is uh, a solid game uh, i think it's a early it's the first first game on saturday uh, really looking forward to this game and uh, I have taken out KDB. I really hope he doesn't uh, get back to his roaring form. And uh, so for you, Avin, you also took out KDB. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, and, I, I, and we hope, and I'm sure Bhavin is hoping that uh, his two defensive asses don't get a clean sheet. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Wouldn't mind the blank. There. Right, right. All right, boys. Thank you very much. In uh, fact, part of the reason why I'm tempted to yeah, yeah. take that defensive move is because i am anyways looking to bench uh, my city defenders so if i can get a james or a chilwell in i can play both of them and not have to look at the score line nervously right right, right. no that that'll be like a bold call that'll be a bold call all right boys uh, thank you very much and uh, happy diwali to you guys and happy diwali to all the viewers and the listeners uh, have a safe diwali guys good night Thank you. Thanks Anuj. Wish everybody a happy Diwali. Take care. Thank See you. you.